I'm John Perzo, Vice President of Market Development for the Wireless Power Consortium. And we're here at CES 2016. This is the Wireless Power Consortium booth. What we do is create the standard for wireless charging, the ability to charge a personal device like a cell phone, uh, a toothbrush, uh, many other consumer handheld devices without plugging it in. Uh, there's lots of ways to do it. You could do it in the public, you, uh, public locations. You could do it uh, at home, in your car, and we're showing all the different systems that make that possible. Right, so what we have on display here is an example of how wireless charging supports the consumer's journey through life, through the day. Uh, starting perhaps in a, in a home environment where you have wireless charging, uh, your phone wireless charging, say, on a bedside table, uh, wakes you up in the morning. Uh, most of us use our cell phones for a clock and an alarm and so forth. Take your phone into the kitchen where you have a wireless charging stand, put it there while you make your waffles or eggs, grab your cup of coffee, uh, you your phone's continually uh, at 100% charge. The next step might be going into a car. We have uh, automotive uh, applications. We have over 25 models. I think it's 28 today. Mercedes just added one and Audi just announced one today. Um, but there's uh, about 28 models of cars that have Qi wireless charging built in. Um, put your phone down on a charging spot and it also takes information from your phone, allows your, your car to adapt to your per personal preferences like seat position, uh, temperature, radio stations, favorite locations, that sort of thing. Get out of your car, your phone's fully charged. Over here we have an enterprise uh, application where folks like uh, Google and Deloitte and Facebook and so forth have designed wireless charging into their office uh, buildings. Put your phone down on the desk, it's charging. The application comes up, gives you access to lighting, HVAC, door locks, that sort of thing. Um, so wireless charging is not just a way of easily charging your phone, keeping your phone charged all the time, but it also gives you access to your environment in ways you didn't otherwise have. All right, well, we just got a look at the Wireless Power Consortium. I want to make sure I say the word right. Uh, and we got a look at some of the uh, demos at the area that is actually right above our Android Authority booth. So you, you saw that, and we also got a spiel from John here, uh, who was able to tell you about applications in the home, in the car, and of course, in a business. But yeah. now we're going to do uh, a little quick talk just to see uh, what, how things are going with the WPC and with things like Qi Wireless Charging. Um, what I'm going to go a little bit uh, vague on this one, you know, so you can go anywhere you want with this. Okay. What would the future of wireless charging look like in your eyes right now? That, that's that's an awesome question. Sufficiently vague. Yeah. <laughs> um, the future of wireless charging, as most of us in the Wireless Power Consortium see it, mm -hmm. is phones that don't ever die. Okay. Phones that have small smaller batteries than they do today, mm -hmm. but don't die because we we move from one charging location to the other. It's just embedded in our daily journey. Mm -hmm. So if I was sitting here right now and you had a Qi wireless charging unit built in, uh, I, would, I would probably have my phone on the table. Maybe I'd turn it upside down so you don't see exactly who's calling, but <laughs> whatever, it's charging. It's just charging as I go through my day. Absolutely. And it, it's always around 80 or 90%. My phone right now is at 99% because I, this is what I do. So I have it in the car. Uh, of course, we have a few chargers in our booth. Oh, yeah. But they're in McDonald's, they're in hotels, they're in public spaces. And the idea is that these are so critical to our lives now. They're safety devices, they're way we stay in touch, they're uh, uh, entertaining devices and entertainment devices, sometimes entertaining, like when Siri says something I don't like. But we always want them online. Mm -hmm. And so to have chargers embedded in our environment uh, ensures that we don't have this thing called battery anxiety, which battery anxiety is when my battery gets low and I start changing my behavior. Yeah. Right? I stop texting, I stop using uh, internet searches and so forth. Start asking for a charger. <laughs> Where, <laughs> anyone start has looking a charger. around. I'm, yeah, looking, exactly. I'm looking around for an AC outlet. Yeah. I'm sitting on the floor in the airport. Yeah, exactly. So my view, all of us at the WPC, our view is you don't need that. As long as the systems are efficient, they work well and they're ubiquitous. It's a different way to, to keep charged. You mentioned ubiquity. How, how tough, I, I suppose I shouldn't say how tough, but uh, what, what, is, what does it look like when the market strategy is to get these wireless chargers into as many places as possible? Is it tough to uh, create, let's say, the, the, uh, 
the infrastructure for it. You know, if you go to Starbucks or you go to the airport, there are there are charging docks and everything like that. But what does it look like when you're trying to actually create wireless charging areas in pretty much everywhere? Like we can even talk about the convention center. Yeah. You know, if we could get a bunch in every corner of every yeah. every block. Why, why not? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, there's ways to do that. So, so the easy way is that the members of the WPC or some member company that has the pockets deep enough just does it. Mm -hmm. They just pay for it. Okay. We don't do that mm -hmm. because we feel that if there's value in it, then the market will support it. So we're we're a little different in that way. We don't actually fund deployment of wireless chargers. Oh, we let okay. we let the market uh, drive that mm -hmm. and. It might take longer, but they're committed. And so what we've seen, in fact, the last year has been a really exciting year for the WPC because that deployment has just taken off. So over 4,000 locations now, uh, McDonald's in the UK and other test markets around the world. Absolutely. Uh, hotels, public spaces, um, especially cars. So there's now 28, as of today, there's 28 models of cars, yeah. which is a really good place to charge your phone. Oh, absolutely, yeah. We just won't plug them in. Mm -hmm. I just don't want to be bothered plugging it in, especially when you're driving, but we just don't think to you just want plug to our plop phone it in. down. Put it down, yeah. it charges, and oh, by the way, when you put it down to charge it, things happen. Like the car knows you're charging your phone, so it enables uh, a, a a personalization, mm -hmm. and we talked about that, a yeah, personalization of the, of the space. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be your car, right? You could get out in another city and put that uh, same phone down in a, another car and it adapts to your settings. So the, the difficulty or the hurdles in hurdles. establishing uh, an international ubiquitous uh, deployment is the those companies understanding the value their customers asking for it, which is now happening. Yeah. So last year, uh, 2014, most of our members were running around the world helping people understand what wireless charging was mm -hmm. and selling this vision. Now it's reversed. Now it's a pull market. So mm -hmm. we have uh, hotels coming to us and restaurants coming to us saying, which one should I use? Yeah. It, they're not asking which standard should I use because there's only one standard that's really deployed. They're not asking uh, should I use wireless charging because they know how valuable it is. Exactly. They're saying, well, there's 150 different types of transmitters I can install here, network attached, standalone, mm -hmm. under the table, in the table, on the table. There's all kinds of ways. So just that cycle, getting that cycle uh, ramped up. And last year, 2015, we saw that just, click in. Just go up, okay. Yeah. So you mentioned earlier batteries, uh, the, the fact that we don't want our phones to ever die. <laughs> yeah. um, we're, are we going to be seeing, because uh, for example, the uh, Nexus 6P that came out, uh, it actually went away with wireless charging, whereas the previous version of the Nexus had it. Right. And I think, and, and, and the consensus uh, for the most part was that they did that to focus on the fastest type of charging that right. they could put in right. using USB Type-C. Yeah. Is, uh, is there an answer to that? Will wireless charging have the kind of speed that, that a wire, let's say, USB Type-C will be able to have? Right. So the, the USB-C and quick charge, mm -hmm. however you call it, quick yeah. charge, turbo charge, <laughs> fast charge, different names, different companies, all the same thing. My phone is a, a little over, one. this is the Motorola yeah. Droid Turbo, and it's got a large battery and fast charging. Yes. Um, best phone I've ever had. Anyway, it, it's, a, it's a great, USB-C was seen as a way, okay, you don't necessarily need as much. Mm. All right. But the answer is, uh, they would have used fast charging if it was out. It was a, that came out middle of last year. Yeah. Uh, our spec for 15 watts, we, we just released a 15 watt spec, which enables the fast charging. So this phone, fast charging, takes about 15 watts, a little bit less than 15 watts to okay. charge. That's what you need. Uh, and that spec was released in about the end of June or so, and products and chips to make those systems are now on the market. But Android, need to get their phone out. Uh, I should say Google needed to get yeah, their Google, phone out. Yeah. Uh, and now you could do fast charging or you could do wireless fast charging, which is really the best of both worlds. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, great. Well, uh, in terms of uh, batteries, you know, we, we were discussing just before the interview uh, the the uh, the fact that really one of the only things that 
manufacturers are able to do right now is, like you said, the brute force strategy, which is putting huge batteries into phones. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so if, you, if you're looking for a smaller battery in order to have a smaller form factor, um, then I guess uh, providing all of the different types of charging uh, would be kind of you guys' focus, obviously, and that's what we've been talking about. It really is. Yeah. So wireless charging enables a number of things, and one of them is uh, if you have wireless charging really deployed throughout your daily journey, mm -hmm. and that's well on its way, then you, 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 battery anxiety goes away, yep. but you can actually decrease the size of the battery, right? And smaller batteries charge faster mm -hmm. with less heat, and, and they don't last as long, but you don't need them to because you're never without the ability to charge, in fact, charge quickly. Mm -hmm. So what that does is it decreases dependency on the lithium ion battery material, decreases the cost of a phone, the size of the phone. Mm -hmm. It's a real benefit for consumers, cheaper phones, better for the environment. It's just, a, it's a good thing all around. Well then I'll tell you one thing. One thing I do want to see are more external batteries yeah. with wireless charging built in. Yeah. I'll just lay it right on top. Yeah. That would be the thing that I'm looking for, but we'll have yeah. to see if that's going to become more prevalent in this Well, there year. are about 20 of them in our booth right now. Oh, there are? Yeah, they're called power banks. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so on one side is a receiver and the other side is a transmitter. Mm. So you put this power bank, which might be a 2100 milliamp hour battery, you know, something that's going to double your battery life. Set it down on a wireless charger and you charge the you got a fuel tank. The actual bank, yeah. Right? Put your phone on top of that, throw that in your purse, your wallet, whatever. Put that on the table. If there's not a wireless charging spot in the table already, put that down. You got one now. Yeah. I think that would be, for, for me personally at least, that would be a perfect solution for all of that. So there's a really <laughs> good selection of those things, yeah. and they call them power banks. Yeah, power banks. I'm going to have to take a look at them, especially maybe we'll, we'll pop back up to, the, to yep. the booth. But you know what, for now, I want to thank you, John, for coming by, and I really appreciate the interview and everything. Yeah, uh, yeah from uh, WPC, John over here, make sure you stay tuned to Android 30 for even more. And don't forget to check out, even at the beginning of this video, or if it's a separate video, all of the stuff that they were showing at their booth that was right above ours. So, thank you once again, John. A pleasure. All Always right. a pleasure. Key, uh, Android Authority. It, uh, there we go. Keep it tuned to Android 34 even more because we are your source for all things CES 2016.